Welcome to part one of Top Tip Time. In many of my videos I feature something called Top Tip Time where I will try and emphasize a particularly good bit of useful information but it occurs to me that there are a lot more top tips in my videos than the ones I normally feature. So I'm making this series starting of course with part one to show some very helpful top tips. I really do like this traction engine. I think my vacuum cleaner has a thing about it too. These top tips are taken from my series, A Large Model Showman's Engine. I mentioned how I got rid of all the bubbling on the roof. It starts with a piece of cotton cloth. I've been into steam engines for quite a lot of years, but also I really enjoy building model aircraft. And during the model aircraft years, I got really good with this old thing. It's called a heat sealing iron. I've turned it up full so it's getting very hot. It's held together with duct tape as well, but it's because it's very old and had a lot of use. A bit like me, I'm held together with duct tape as well sometimes. You have to be very careful with these special irons. It depends on the temperature you need. Here's a word of caution. Do not apply these irons direct to the paintwork. If you do that, you will thoroughly spoil the job and you will get a lot of extra bubbles as the paint blisters. In common with a lot of the jobs that I do in the workshop, it's a feel thing knowing when to withdraw the heat. And after withdrawing the heat, it's very important to make sure that the fabric sticks to the wood underneath, and this is achieved by rubbing the cloth which is still warm over the surface. A good friend of mine is going to make me a leather belt. Not to hold my trousers up, he's already made me one of those. He's going to make me a really nice leather drive belt to drive the generator. I know there is a wealth of belting available for things like this, but for this showman's engine, I really would like a handmade leather belt. He sent me a paper template to try. This was made to the original dimensions. If you measure the pulley, measure the flywheel, and the distance between centers, there are many online calculators available to tell you the length of the belt that you need. When I fitted the paper belt, it was a bit slack, so it was an easy job to cut it and measure that. My friend now has the measurements, so he can go ahead and make a proper leather belt for this. Health and safety warning. Take great care if you remove the paint using this method. You could easily cause yourself serious injury. And I do not recommend doing it this way. Or as I also show, doing the job with the engine running. Using coarse emery cloth is the safest way in my opinion. The paintwork all the way around the flywheel is quite badly damaged, so the best thing to do is to remove it. I'm doing this by using the very dangerous practice of a handheld Stanley knife blade. It's quite difficult to do, you have to get the angle correct and put plenty of pressure on it. But after a while you get under the skin of the paint, then bit by bit you can remove it. Once I got rid of the bulk of the paint using the Stanley knife blade, I used this very useful tool to remove the rest. It's not fitted with a cutting disc, it's fitted with a flapper wheel. But unlike the flapper wheel that you would fit in an electric drill, the flapper wheel is in a disc form, and this makes short work of the paint that was left on the rim of the flywheel. At this stage I'd like to point out that it's not as easy as it looks. I'm holding the angle grinder very firmly, and I am controlling where it goes accurately. I found it better though to remove the paint initially with the Stanley knife blade, and I only enlisted the help of the angle grinder once I got through the main paint layer. I'm wearing a breathing mask for this, the only one that I've got, I don't go and buy any more at the moment. When doing jobs like this, I always recommend the wearing of PPE, that's eye protection and a breathing mask. And I cannot recommend using a Stanley knife blade, but I've used them for years so I don't seem to have a problem with cutting myself much. And I do have at least three of my original fingers intact. So what is this wondrous tool that I'm using? Well here it is. It's a Proxon motor tool. It's nothing more than a very small, high quality, battery powered angle grinder. And the wheel that's on it was the one that was on it when I bought it. And as I mentioned, it's a flapper wheel. In the end though, I felt it was best to finish it off with a piece of coarse emery cloth. I will work down the grades of emery cloth down to wet or dry sandpaper until I get a really fine finish on the outer rim of the flywheel all the way around. I thought I would take this opportunity while the flywheel is spinning to hold a piece of emery cloth against the outer edge. 
If it was going faster, it would clean up in no time. I've done this many times on steam engines. Use a steam engine's own power to clean up the outer edge of the flywheel. I know, I have an idea. I'll use the flapper wheel. And with the flapper wheel spinning lightly against the flywheel edge, because it's revolving, I'm getting a really even finish. Although there still is quite a way to go yet, before the rim of the flywheel becomes very smooth and highly polished. Here's a shot from the driver's viewpoint, and it's so much bigger than most of my model steam engines. Truly poetry in motion. And that's where I'm going to leave it for the moment. A driver's eye view till the end of the video. The water gurgling noise that you can hear is the crankshaft driven water pump returning the water back to the tank because the bypass is open. I'd just like to say on the 1st of May 2020 in these very strange coronavirus lockdown times make sure that you stay safe and stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back